this tutorial we're going to create a wine bottle using a revolved polygon and two textures one for the glass one for the label we'll start by introducing a reference picture to trace the contour of the bottle that we have in mind I'm going to hold down the spacebar create and I'm going to choose free image plane that free image plane is going to allow me to put the picture that I'm going to use as my reference with it selected if I were to go to the attributes I see a folder in which I can introduce that reference picture I'm speaking of just as if I were bringing a texture in. I'm going to click on it and I'll go out and find that reference picture that I had in mind. Once I've opened it you'll see that the free image plane changes its contour to accommodate the shape and resolution of the picture. I'm going to go to the attributes. In the attributes I'm going to drop the alpha gain to 0.5 that will introduce a bit of transparency to the reference picture so I can see my path while I'm tracing and perhaps see the geometry a little better in reference to the picture itself. I'm now going to go to the channel box. I'm going to put it on its own layer so that I can lock it down to prevent it from moving while I'm modeling. I'll go to the layer window and the last icon on the far right appears to be a white plane with a blue sphere on it. I'll click on it, double click on the name of the layer, and name it appropriately. Before I start drawing the contour of the bottle with the curve tool, I'm going to lock the template layer down. So if I go to the last box next to the letter P in the layer window, I can click and I'll get T for transparency, and then R for restrict, which means the template will stay stationary while I'm drawing and working on my geometry. I'm now going to go to the orthographic view, hold down the spacebar, go to create curve tools, see the curve tool and the attributes. I'm going to set it for two and I'll start to trace the contour of the bottle. And as always, it's a good idea to put more points in than you think you're going to need. It's much easier to do, delete than to add these afterwards. Once I've hit return, I'm now ready to revolve. I'll hold down the space bar, go to Surfaces, Revolve, Attributes. I'm going to reset the settings. I'm going to choose Polygon, Quads and Count, and then I'll leave the default of 200. And now I've got the beginning of the bottle. Now it's not nearly what I want, so I'm going to do some editing. And I'll start by setting my viewport so that I'm looking at the ghost button and that allows me to turn the geometry opacity on and off as I'm working. So I'm going to just move that to the side and I'll grab the path and I'll pull that out to add some more thickness to it. I'll put my ghost back on and it'll take a little while to get what you want because if you we hit three on the keyboard, you're going to observe that geometry shrinks when the smooth is run on it. So you have to anticipate that. I do want to put one level of smooth on so I can precisely place the label afterwards. So I'm going to start the modeling process. I'll begin by selecting the top polyfaces. And if I shift select them, I can take those and I'll move those up to give it the height that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to go to my orthographic view and start to use the edge loop tool. Now this is a little broader. I'll hit three on the keyboard. So it looks pretty good so far as far as the width. So I'm going to return to one and I'm going to start to add the edge loops so that I can build that little collar that's at the top of the bottle. And as you're doing this, I add them very sparingly, hitting three on the keyboard to see what your results are. 
And if you need to edit an entire line or edge, you can right click, choose edge, double click on that edge, and you'll see it selects it around the entire contour. I'm going to go now and fine tune this bottle a bit, and then when I return, we'll continue with the tutorial. Now that I have the geometry I want, I'm going to run a smooth on it so that when I place my textures on with the label in particular, I can keep it where I want and the proportions I want. I'll hold down the space bar, I'm going to go to mesh, and I'm going to go to smooth. The default setting is for one level. I'll hit apply, and I'm going to return to my object mode. I'm going to delete by type history at this point. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose assign new material. And it'll be the Arnold AI standard. And I'll name it bottle. And under base, I'm going to zero out the weight. And I'm going to zero out the color. Now the bottle will get black. I'm just going to take off the ghost for a moment. You can see your bottle will get black now. Now, I'm not going to worry about the glass effect because it doesn't really show up until we have the Arnold render. So I'm going to put the label on first and then deal with the entire lighting render process once all the textures are in place. I'll go to the channel window at this point and I'll just turn off my template. Now I'm going to return to Ghost and I'm going to go to the perspective view to start. Now I want to select the faces that will best accommodate the art that I'm going to put on there. So at this point my picture was not a true orthographic view and that label was not flat. If I was to look down at the bottom you can see the curvature of the picture. So I've got to really compensate for that and just kind of wing it here. I'll right click and I'm going to choose face and I think I'll probably start here and if I were to go to the one where I'd like to add the ones from in between, I can hold the shift key and double click and it'll choose that ring for me. So I can do that pretty much for the entire label. Once I've got a number of them selected, I will go to my orthographic view and see how well this lines up with what I need to do for the label itself. So by holding the shift, and double clicking it selects all those faces in between the ones we're choosing. I'm going to go to my orthographic now and see how this stacks up. So it looks like I could use another row here and then maybe at the bottom. So I'll do that. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Assign New Material. I'll choose Arnold and again, again the AI Standard Surface. Now while they're selected still, I'm going to put the checkerboard on it. So I'll go to the Base, Color tab, click on it, add the checkerboard. And I'll take the Ghost off. And there's my label. Now that I have the checkerboard pattern on, I'm going to go to the UV editor. And in my UV editor, I can see that in the middle of the checkerboard square that Photoshop would understand is that UV map. And my rectangles are not what I need. If you recall, when we apply textures, we want these to be perfect squares of white and black. So I'm looking at my UV map and I'm looking at the z-axis coming perpendicular from it. So I'm going to map it planar mapping in the z-axis. I'll hold down the space bar and I'll go to UVs, planar mapping, I'll choose a Z, I'll hit apply. Now I'm going to go to the channel box and I'll make both the projection width and height the same number. I'll put five and now if I return to the UV editor, I can see there is my texture label shape. I'll return to the object mode. And I'll go to image, UV snapshot. And I'll direct it to my folder, apply and close. 
Now we're ready to go into Photoshop and put our label on the UV map. I've got my label and I've got my UV map. Now this label is not perfectly square. If I were going to do this I would look for a flat version of this but for the tutorial this will serve the purpose. So my objective is to get this into here and scale it to fit that. Now for the sake of the tutorial I'm going to put a new layer in that is black so that we can see the UV map against the UV document. I'll go over to my art I'll get the marquee tool and I'll select and I'll copy and paste. I'm going to scale that quickly to fit within the context of that box. I'm not going to worry too much about the exact proportions because this is not a perfectly flat label so I'll just quickly put this in to preview the work. Maybe to tweak it, I'll go to the Warp tool, and I'll just pull that up a little. Just so the white goes out to the edge of the UV map. And that'll do. I'll save it as a PSD. I'm going to turn off the UV map. Once I've saved, I'll return into Maya. In Maya, I'll select the bottle, select face, select one of the poly faces, right click and choose material attribute, break the connection by right clicking on the word color in the base tab and going back out and applying my texture. I'll go back to my object mode and I'm going to go to my channel box. I'll turn off the template. I'll put on the background that I put in temporarily for the sake of the tutorial. And I'll set up my light. I'll go to Arnold Render View. I'll zoom in a bit and you can start to see the translucence, particularly around the bottom there. Now, if I go to the attribute for the bottle, and I start to adjust the settings under transmission. I can start to play with the translucence of the bottle as well. So you can see that by playing with the weight, I can add the transparency I need. And again, this would be specific to the environment that you see the bottle in. So. I'm not going to go any further with this because each of you will have a custom take on this. And that concludes the tutorial.